Good morning and welcome once more to Tourismus Namibia, our weekly magazine show where we present a couple of facts about Namibia and uh, invite you to various destinations and at the end also bring you under to the point an interview or something interesting that we picked up in the week. So anyway, my name is Frank Steffen, as you can see on the screen there, and uh, I'll be taking you through the show and hopefully we've got some interesting stuff for you this week. Um, first up is obviously topics. Right, welcome back. And uh, like I said, topics. And uh, first and foremost, probably uh, an issue that is quite close to my heart is on um, Friday morning, um, NAMPUA, that is the Association for, uh, for Oil and Gas Explorers and pro Producing Companies, they had a bit of a, 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 a press briefing where they tried to inform people. And I was a bit surprised to then suddenly see that Recon Africa once again stole the show, it seems, because they were allowed to suddenly present their case and certainly were able to profile themselves and uh, explain their, 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 their presence in the CASA uh, TFCA, that's the Kavango Zambezi Transfrontier uh, Conservation Area. And uh, most people by now know that uh, the, the Kavango is part of the bigger Kaza area, Kaza Park. And uh, that has always been the reason why on this show and in the news more often than not, uh, Recon Africa has been criticized. Not so much because they drill for oil, but the fact that they were allowed to drill for oil while they had not uh, um, adhered to all the uh, requirements that, that prescribe uh, how an environmental impact assessment should be done. So if we go back to that map now and we look at it, uh, you will see that um, they once again during the Nampua uh, uh, meeting, they explained that they're far from the Okavango River and that they're even further away from the d uh, delta uh, from the Okavango Delta area in Botswana. And they once again told us about these fancy 10 kilometer buffer zones and 20 kilometer buffer zones and I don't know what else. But what they seem to forget is that on this map, it looks very nice. Uh, and, and certainly the, the sites where they drill seem to be very far from Rundu, 50 kilometers as they describe it. But now if we look at the next map, not the map, um, it's, it's an extraction of Google Earth that I made. What you see there, that darkish color, is where the Omataku Omuramba basically flows coming up from the southwestern side as it goes up to uh, Shitemo. That's where I made that little red circle. Um, and that's literally where the Omataku Omuramba flows into the Okavango River. The, the Omataku Omuramba in, in these stages is mostly a perennial river. Um, but it, it runs from time to time when the rain is, is coming down well. And uh, so the fact is, as you can see, all those darkish areas, is, uh, those are all waterways. But the big issue is the Omataku Omuramba flows directly into the, uh, um, into the Okavango River. And that is really the issue. And that is the reason why everybody uh, uh, complained that if there is no EIA, um, then, then there's a problem because environmental impact assessments are done exactly because of this sort of thing. Um, so if we go at the, the, look at the next photo, um, this is the actual Kawe drill site and uh, that was a photo we made in March uh, 2021 when it was fully operational. And what you see in the back there is the run of the Omataku. And we actually measured that distance. It was exactly one kilometer away. So nothing about 10 kilometer buffer zones. So if Nampua um, lends itself or allows somebody like Recon Africa to, to really overrule an information session, uh, I must be quite honest then, somewhere along the line Nampua is um, 
I don't know. They're not doing it the ethical uh, way, as far as I'm concerned. Um, because Recon Africa was the only company that was allowed to profile itself. There clearly are other companies like Kudu Gas and then the Shell and the Total uh, um, discoveries of offshore oil um, that they should have had the same opportunity to present their case then. So I felt it was a bit of, uh, I felt like a bit of a fool having accepted the, the, um, the invitation to go to that media uh, thingy because the, the stuff that they told us, we've been writing about, we know about, it doesn't change the fact that the environmental impact assessment was never properly done. So uh, clearly we will always differ from them on that score. Um, they have stopped drilling for the moment, but they have already announced that they'll be drilling again. And they again said so now that they're busy with the drilling uh, uh, operation or project. So clearly they intend to still carry on even though the EIA has not been properly done, something that even at the UN uh, environmental uh, um, level was criticized in the past. Anyway, so that, those were Nampua and Recon Africa, which I thought was a bit ridiculous. Um, the first thing, uh, the next item we've got is flights, ex Hsio Kutaku. Some of you might have seen that we posted it on the Tourismus Namibia Facebook site as well. And uh, from today onwards, uh, there are more extended flight offers from Hsio Kutaku International Airport. And the airport company of Namibia, NAC, announced uh, uh, earlier in the week that the now urgently needed expansion of the range of flights at Hosea Kutaku has become possible through the conclusion of a bilateral air traffic agreement between Namibia and the countries of Germany, South Africa, Angola and Ethiopia. Uh, so uh, Eurowings Discover, for example, uh, they've extended it to seven flights per week. As from July through to September, they will even extend it to 10. And Ethiopian Airlines uh, started their Sunday flight again. So they now fly on Sundays, but also on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays and even on Saturdays. So that's been starting today. Um, the, obviously, the latter one is from Addis Ababa to uh, Vintuk. And then obviously, uh, Fly Namibia has earlier uh, already started uh, taking six flights from Vintuk to Cape Town. And even Angolan Talk is adding the Saturday to its Monday and Thursday flights. So in February alone, we found that a significant increase from 10,393 passengers to 24,055 passengers compared to February last year um, had been recorded. And so we're talking of an increase of roughly 131.5%. So that's quite huge. So if you, if you want to come and visit Namibia, I suppose uh, you have got different offers now. And I know that uh, um, Lufthansa, through its uh, Eurowings Discover, was one of the first ones to actually start flying to, to Namibia again and extending the flights quite some, some bit. And I know that uh, Eurowings also um, are busy looking at the possibility during July and September, possibly even longer, to offer flights from Vintuk up to Victoria Falls. So that's even available to local people. So quite a nice offer there. Right, and up next, something that we don't talk about that often, but I feel it's part of the, the tourism offer that we've got because more often than not, uh, Namibia doesn't particularly look much at arts, um, but we've got a new uh, atelier and, and um, it is basically called the Bell House Atelier and Gallery. Um, it is in Bell Street uh, and uh, the house is situated there. It's just lower down from Sneeman Circle, so it's, it's relatively close to the city centre still. Um, and uh, it was open in March, on 8th of March in fact, and it's found in the old Grüner Kranz uh, complex. That used to be quite a well-known hotel in years gone by and it's, um, it's now a home to Bell House and quite a number of other uh, similar, I, th I think there are other studios as well. So um, they, they believe they bring a f breath of fresh air to the 1906 home of Namibian landscape architect Herbert Dina. So um, this is uh, the creative minds behind Bellhaus are Marcy Maxson and Andrea Benzen. And um, 
the starkly contrasting works of abstract artist Marcy Maxson and painter Marianne Chapman's oil portraits and still lifes are part of the maiden exhibition of the brand new Bell House Gallery and Studio. And the, this exhibition uh, was called The Marks We Leave Behind. It ended it yesterday, in fact, um, but it was a visual reflection of the impact and influence we as human beings have on the me people we love and on the world we live in. So, like I said, Bell House, it's found in number 18 Bell Street. Um, that's the old Grüner Kranz, it's on the back side. So, anyway, there you've got the site, and uh, hopefully that will uh, have you visit some of our studios for a change, because we do have a number of them, and I found this to be quite an interesting new addition to that sort of art scene. That brings us to the end of topics. Up next, we've got destinations. Yeah, destinations, and uh, this week we've got two interesting uh, contributions. The one is the wellness center at the Avani Hotel, which is right smack in the middle of town. If you look at the map here, you can see there, up there, there's the uh, German church that I indicated there, Christuskirche, and then the Avani Hotel is in the Gustav Vogt Center. And uh, within that same setup, you find the wellness center as well. So easy does it. Um, I didn't bring you many photos this time because I feel there's enough uh, a talk by Amy who can explain how it works. Hi everybody, my name is Amy. I'm the owner of Amy's Wellness Centre. We were formerly situated in the Kalahari Sands Hotel, now known as Avani Hotel. We relocated to a floor just below the hotel so you can still find us in the Gustav Buch Centre. My journey as a, in the beauty industry started at home when my mom and dad would come home tired, exhausted from a long day's work. I would think to myself, what can I do to make these people's day and just a little bit better? So I decided to give them a foot massage or a back massage and that's when my passion for the beauty industry started. I studied three years in Potchefstroom for a higher diploma in somatology, which is the study of health and skin care. I then worked a year at Kohaganas started working a year at the Avani Hotel Spa, which was privately owned, and I was fortunate enough to take it over from the previous owner a year after. That was in 2008, and that's when my journey as an entrepreneur in the beauty industry started. The Wellness Centre offers a wide variety of treatments, ranging from facials, acne treatments, anti-aging treatments, pigmentation treatments, massaging, hot stones, relaxation, aromatherapy, reflexology, slimming treatments, laser treatments, which is um, permanent hair removal or in-depth treatments of your skin, such as wrinkle reduction, photo rejuvenate, rejuvenation treatments, acne treatments as well. We also have a jacuzzi spa bath, which we like to combine with a couple's package. You come, you have a lovely massage with your loved one, it could be a girlfriend, it could be hubby, um, afterwards, you can go and re relax in our jacuzzi, which is situated in its own private little room with a bottle of bubbly and a snack platter. We also do day packages, bridal showers, baby showers, kiddie parties, bachelorette parties, um, baby showers. So we have, offer a full range of, of services. Latest to our range of services is our Ivy Clinic, where you can come in and enjoy your intravenous treatments, which ranges from immune boosting, skin lightening and glowing, um, vitamin C treatments, glutathione. So you can WhatsApp us on 081-422-3576 for more information regarding the Wellness Centre. 
So at the Wellness Centre, we sell a wide range of products as well. A lot of products we get from France and from South Africa. But we would also like to welcome our young entrepreneurs who would like to explore the beauty market with their home care products to make a turn at the Wellness Centre and we can help each other grow one another's businesses. For example, we started the initiative of starting our own scrub. It's a lemongrass antibacterial scrub, which you can use at home to wash your hands with once a day. It removes dead skin cells. The lemongrass is antibacterial, kills germs. Also, the sugar exfoliates the hands or the body, leaving your skin nice, silky, and smooth. We also started another initiative with our face masks. So you get different ones. You get your eucalyptus, which is for sinus problems, dry cough, and chest problems. You get your tea tree, which is for oily skin. I mean, a lot of us suffer from the breakouts from wearing a mask all day. This tea tree actually purifies and cleanses the skin. You get your lemon, which helps to enhance your mood during the day. Doesn't that sound like something anybody and everybody needs? And you also get your lemongrass, as I said, which is antibacterial. special occasion coming up, an anniversary, a birthday, want to spend some girl time with your girlfriends or some special time with your lover boy or girl, well why don't you follow me for more info. Behind this door is absolute privacy for you and your girlfriends or you and your loved one.
Yeah, that's the wellness center at Avatni. And uh, clearly, if you've had a long flight and you feel that you need a bit of a massage just to get your muscles going again, might be a good idea. And even if you're a local person, it might be nice to go there on a Saturday morning or on a Sunday and just enjoy uh, something different for a change. So clearly quite a nice idea. Up next, we look at the Flamingo Villas Boutique Hotel. Now, uh, that hotel is found in Warfish Bay. Um, here you can see it from far above. It's, it's sort of on the way out as you go towards the Saltworks and Sandwich Harbor. And um, so if we look at the next photo, you will see I clicked in a bit just to show that it's right on the lagoon. There on the right of the top, you can see that little fleck uh, right there in the water. That's where the, uh, that, that restaurant is found and the yacht club and all those uh, places. So this is quite uh, far out towards the south already if you look at Flamingo Villas. So if we look at the next photo again, there you clearly have it. It's right on the, uh, on the front of the lagoon. Uh, nice little parking space out there, but anyway, you would obviously park your car on the inside. As you can see, it's built like a bit of a horseshoe, so in the back there is more than enough parking. Anyway, so uh, at first glance, you will be transferred into a state of awe and surprise. That's what they write on their internet page, and uh, that is what they say ha will happen to you upon entering the hotel. It will become evident that your awe and surprise is very well founded. Our boutique hotel boasts one of the most spectacular views of the lagoon and of course sunsets over the sea with the peaceful flamingos doing their flamingo shuffle, as they call it, for entertainment. Imagine sitting on the luxury suite patio uh, overlooking the lagoon at sunset with a cocktail that we specialize in, the flamingo shuffle. How be much better can life be? So that's what they reckon and then obviously Tanya Bowser, my colli colleague, uh, organized us a video clip. Hi, I'm Jennifer Zamudio and welcome to the Flamingo Villas. The standard rooms at Flamingo Villas are spacious to relax in without tripping over your suitcase. The culinary delights of the breakfast buffet are on par with dinner. An unrivaled bounty of hot and cold fair to set you up for the day. The quality of your sleep are guaranteed with mattresses and linens of the highest spec. With a renowned chef directing the kitchen, you can expect the absolute highest quality food from the a la carte restaurant. Choose from the finest Namibian beef and fresh locally caught fish for your main course. Whether you opt for standard, luxury, deluxe or the presidential room, all rooms have a captivating view of the lagoon. All bathrooms are clad with beautiful local Namibian marble and equipped with rainfall shower heads.
With luxurious interior design and fresh flower displays, Flamingo Villas will leave you breathless. Treat yourself to a deluxe room or the presidential room and you'll be rewarded with a double aspect view of the lagoon and a wraparound balcony. Flamingo villas are situated on the edge of the waters of the sparkling Barfus Bay Lagoon. With a protected Ramsar site, Flamingo Ballet and Pelican Air Shows literally on your front doorstep, you don't need to go far for entertainment and you certainly won't want to leave Flamingo Villas. Our dedicated staff at Flamingo Villas in Harvey's Bay are waiting to welcome you, so make your reservation today. Yeah, those were the people of Flamingo Villa, uh, Villas Boutique Hotel. Something totally different. M many people automatically sort of direct their, their way of thought towards Swakopmund whenever they think of the coast. And I personally believe that uh, Warfish Bay has got quite a lot to offer, not only in terms of uh, hotels, but simply in terms of tourist offers. And they've got these, like you could see there, these various uh, uh, tours into the desert. Um, and if you go and, and leave uh, Warfish Bay on the on this gravel road towards, uh, as it goes down to, to uh, Solitaire, um, long before Solitaire, you obviously have the access to the to the park where he, where you can look at the Kuizip and um, various other things. Um, there's the Feder back and all types of areas that you can go and visit. And within town, they've got a lot to offer as well as you could see there. So. Don't underestimate Warfish Bay, and I sometimes feel it's less run over than you sometimes have in Swakopmund, especially at, at year end. But it's all a question of taste. Some prefer this and the next the other. But I thought this was quite a nice little idea to, to introduce that hotel to us. So up next, we've got to the point. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Yeah, welcome to another exciting edition. Yeah, and uh, to the point I want to introduce you to, to something different today. So, uh, many of you will remember that uh, a month ago we spent time down in Ludritz. Uh, we actually uh, attended the HUN, that's the Hospitality Association of Namibia Congress for 2021. Uh, it was supposed to be, but it was no, 2022, the first one uh, in, in many years. So. Anyways, and uh, we attended the Congress. We, uh, we taped and, and videoed and, and filmed quite a number of occasions, made many photos, drove around, had a look at Ludritz, um, looked at uh, the area around Ludritz, not only uh, looking at, at Borgenfels and those sort of things, but rather just the bay and what it had to, uh, to offer and uh, going out to Diaz Point and so on. And so we, inter we basically put those, all those clips and all those interviews and the whole uh, story we put into a, quite a longish video, which we will post as from Monday. Um, so, um, but I wanted to just give you a little glimpse of what you can expect. So maybe just have a look. 
My name is Monique Adams and I am the South Correspondent for Namibia Media Holdings. Currently we are at the beautiful Quiver Tree Forest Camp accommodation that's 14 kilometers north of Kitmanswip. If you find yourself traveling to South Africa and you need to arrest and to unwind, make sure you make a pit stop here at the beautiful Quiver Tree Forest. Good morning and uh, welcome to Lüderitzbucht. Uh, Lüderitzbucht obviously being the German name more. My name is Frank Steffen and I welcome you to Hun Congress. Thank you very much, Director of Ceremonies. Um, this is the Gita Inhold and also the CEO of uh, Han. Honorable Councillor Susan Jaleka, the Councillor of our beautiful town, which used to be called a ghost town. Now, when you come here, it's no longer ghost town. Even this area, this area here, was really almost getting into that. But now, you see the refurbished old power station that uh, former councillor here, Mr. Flaxman, Samuel has struggled to ensure that uh, today we are seated here as if it's a new, new place. But this was old power station. May the old, old buildings we had that time. How old is this building? Should be 100 now. Over 100. And it's old, but looks beautiful now. So thank you very much, Mr. Samia, for having really restored this place. Your worship, Mayor, and good morning to all of you. Let me take this opportunity to thank the Hospitality Association of Namibia, Han, executive leadership for the invitation I received. I would like to congratulate them for convening this very important tourism congress. It is, and then there will be about two restaurants and a coffee shop and the Maritime Museum, which will be a major attraction for visitors. And then there will also be a unit. Most of you who are viewing this video will know him. Tiku Traubeb, he's the CEO of the Namibia Tourism Board. Welcome, Tiku. Yes, welcome and much obliged. Yeah, that was just to give you a bit of an idea of the people that we spoke to. But apart from the people that we spoke to, so don't worry, it's not only about talking. There are lots of video clips of, of the surrounding area of Lüderitz. And, and uh, you know, we obviously had the big uh, event at the end of the day. Uh, on the Saturday evening out at Kolmanskop. And uh, so there's lots to see on the video. So it, it, it takes an hour, but you can maybe even look at it in pieces. It's up to you, really. But we hope to, to really give you something of an impression of what happened on that weekend. So that will be as from Monday, so tomorrow. And uh, until then, you still have to be a bit patient because we're just doing the final touches on that little video clip. So that's all from us today. Uh, this brings us to the end of, of this show. Hope you enjoyed what we brought you and um, you're welcome to, to send us a mail. Uh, mine is fstefan at az.com.na. So fstefan, like my name, um, and then at az.com.na. AZ standing for Allgemeine Zeitung. So if you've got some feedback, otherwise for phone us and tell us uh, what you think. And in the meantime, like I said, this brings us to the end of this show. I hope you have s still have a pleasant Sunday afternoon and hopefully you will also have a good week ahead of you. So hopefully then we'll see each other in one week's time, same place, same time. And until then, remain healthy and safe. Bye.